Hi kids, hope you're having an amazing summer. Um, today I'm going to be reading Ladybug Girl and Bumblebee Boy. This is one of my favorites. Ladybug Girl is ready to play, says Lulu. She has been waiting forever to go to her favorite playground, the one with the twisty slide and bouncy dinosaurs. Her mama grabs Bingo's leash and says, all right, let's go. Ladybug Girl leaps over sidewalk cracks that are as big as canyons. When she sees Mrs. Robbins carrying her groceries, Ladybug Girl swoops over to help. The bag is as heavy as a boulder, but it isn't a problem for Ladybug Girl. And Ladybug Girl can count really high. She counts mailbox after mailbox after mailbox, all the way up to infinity. Bingo sniffs everything. When they get to the playground, it's full of kids. When Bingo settles into his spot under a bench, Lulu looks around for someone to play with. She sees Sam from her music class. He's playing by himself in the sandbox. Hi, Sam, she says. Hi, Lulu, he says back. Want to play with me? Sure, what do you want to play, asks Lulu. Diggers, of course, says Sam. Lulu has never really liked playing diggers. She doesn't like getting sand in her boots. How about monkeys? In a flash, Lulu is hanging from the jungle gym. Monkeys is the best, Lulu yells. No, I don't like that, says Sam. Lulu watches Sam run off to the big castle. Well, maybe we could play castle, Lulu thinks. Being a princess wouldn't be so bad. But Sam is standing at the bottom of the castle, and that's not where she usually plays. Why are you down there, Lulu asks, puzzled. Don't you think playing on the top is better? When Sam doesn't answer, Lulu says, Never mind, I know the perfect thing for us to do. The seesaw! She runs over and sits down on one side of the seesaw and waits. And waits. Sam just stands there, not getting on. The other side is high and empty, while she is stuck on the ground. Lulu and Sam glare at each other. Neither one of them says anything. Then Lulu sputters, You don't want to do anything I want to do. And you don't want to do what I want, Sam grumbles. Lulu's cheeks are getting hot. She was very frustrated. Why doesn't Sam want to play? She definitely didn't have this problem on the way to the playground when she was Ladybug Girl. It was easy to have fun then. Maybe she should just go play by herself. And then Lulu has an idea. She takes a deep breath and says, Do you want to play Ladybug Girl with me? Ladybug Girl? How do you play that? asks Sam. I'll show you, she says. Lady Ladybug Girl has superpowers. I can fly and I'm super strong. Superpowers? Sam is very interested. And who can I be? he asks. Well, you sort of look like a bee, she says Lulu. A bee? Yeah, a bee can fly. And he will sting people if they bother him. I need a stinger, says Sam. He sees a stick and picks it up. I'm Bumblebee Boy, Sam declares. And I'm Ladybug Girl, yells Lulu. Nothing can stop us. Ladybug Girl and Bumblebee Boy zoom around the playground looking to help anyone in trouble. A squirrel scampers by Bingo. Oh no, yells Bumble Boy. That scary monster is trying to get your dog. He needs help right away. We're coming, Bingo, says Bumblebee Boy. They bravely charge forward. The scary monster is no match for their superpowers and leaps away. We did it. We saved Bingo. Are you okay, asks Ladybug Girl. Bingo wags his tail. Then Bumblebee runs towards the swings. Watch how high I can fly, he yells. I can fly high too, Ladybug Girl says, running behind him. They are soon whipping through the air. They flap their wings harder and harder. They are so high they can almost touch a cloud. Look, says Ladybug Girl, waving towards the tire swing. There's a mean robot. It's going to crush the playground. We need to stop it. The rush, they rush over to the mean robot. Ladybug Girl grabs on and jumps on top of its head. 
Bumblebee Boy stings it with his stinger again and again. This will teach you not to mess with Bumblebee Boy. And Ladybug Girl. Feeling rather proud for saving the playground and probably the whole town, Ladybug Girl and Bumblebee Boy decide to have a parade on the bouncy dinosaurs. It is a very important celebration. A crowd gathers to watch the parade. People cheer and float, f throw flowers at them. Two girls who are watching them come over. Can we play with you? asks Marley. I can be Butterfly Girl. No, says Kiki. We already decided I'm Butterfly Girl. You can be Dragonfly Girl. Ladybug Girl and Bumblebee look at bo Boy look at them. If, you're, if we're going to play together, says Ladybug Girl, we don't fight each other. Yeah, we work together to fight bad guys, like the giant snake over there, says Bumblebee Boy, pointing to the twisty slide. Ladybug Girl adds, and Dragonfly Girl can breathe fire. Fire? I'm Dragonfly Girl? Agrees Marley. A Dragonfly Girl breathes fire, Ladybug Girl yells. Watch out! And Giant Snake, here comes the Bug Squad! Later, when it's time to go, Lulu says, It was fun playing together. Do you want to play Bug Squad tomorrow, asks Sam? Definitely, because Ladybug Girl and Bumblebee Boy can do anything. Mama, asks Lulu as they head home, Can we get wings for Bingo? The end. Hope you enjoyed Ladybug Girl and Bumblebee Boy. Cut. <laughs> and action. Hi kids, I hope you're enjoying your summer. I have a book for you. It's called Bad Apple, A Tale of Friendship, and it's one of my favorites. Mac was a good apple. He shared his toys with the other apples, helped Granny Smith pick up, to her after, pick up after her art class, and loved to dive fearlessly into the watering hole. On a sunny day, Mac could bob for hours. On cloudy days, Mac would search for the perfect pillow of green grass and take a long nap. In his dreams, it was always sunny. But one day, as Mac lay sleeping, it began to rain. Soon, all the little creatures in the earth around him poked their heads out to look for higher ground. Some of them found safety under the large toadstools. Others crawled into the stones and pebbles, but one small worm had another idea. When Mac woke up, he was covered in raindrops and he wasn't alone. You won't believe the dream I just had. A funny little worm was tickling me right here. And now I can't seem to get him out of your head? It was you! And that's how Mac met Will. Will showed Mac how to fly a kite, how to fly himself, and play in the dirt. He loved making a mess. Mac took his new friend to the watering hole to clean off. He couldn't remember a better day. Until he took Will to the orchard. Look at Mac! He's got worms! Mac's a rotten apple! I'm not rotten. I'm quite sweet, actually. So they left. Will cheered Mac up by reading aloud from some of his favorite novels. It was a bit of a bookworm. Mac liked the adventure stories best. He also liked it when Will finished his sentence for, sentences for him. The most exciting part is when the pirates find treasure in the dirt. But the next day, it happened again. Ha ha! It's the bad apple! Ew, worms! And no one in the orchard would play with them. Not even the bad apples. Crab apples can be so mean. That night, the two friends sat alone on the, on the grass without saying a word. In the morning, Will was nowhere to be found. 
He wrote, you are a good apple. Mac went back to playing with his or orchard friends, diving fearlessly into the watering hole and painting in Granny Smith's glass, but nothing was the same. There was a hole in Mac that he couldn't fill, not a big hole, just a teeny tiny little, you know, a small hole, just big enough to fit. And nobody finished his sentence. Mac had to find Will. He searched low and high and in between, in the dirt, around the watering hole, and just when he had given up all hope, he looked up in the sky. Oh, I think he found him. Mac knew he'd better he he'd rather be a bad apple with Will than a sad apple without him. I was hoping I could help me turn the pages. How did you know? Because you will always be a good apple in my book. Good and happy, and there's nothing bad about that. The end. Hope you enjoyed Bad Apple, A Tale of Friendship, and have an amazing summer.